Vincent is a hunter that lives deep in the mountains. One night, he hears a crying baby. He suspects that a robber might have snuck in so he searches around his house while holding on to an axe. After looking around, he couldn't find anyone. Vincent begins to wonder if he's hearing things because he's been having similar experiences ever since he learned that he can't have a child. Suddenly, he finds a baby. He grabs the baby and puts his ear against the baby's chest. Vincent can hear the baby's heart beating and this makes him ecstatic. His wife, Olina, approaches him and asks him why he was making so much noise. She is shocked to see that her husband is holding on to a baby. They decide to raise the baby as their own and they name him Chiron. Eventually, Chiron turns 12. He starts reading a lot of magical books. He has a good relationship with his father and he asks his father about magic. However, Vincent knows nothing about magic. The local kids see them walking together. They comment on Chiron's strange behavior. Like a typical nerd, he reads every day but never plays with them. Vincent overhears the local kids talking about his son. This offends Vincent but he just leaves them alone. He thinks he's lacking as a father but he really loves his son. Later, they head to the city of Craze. There, Vincent leaves Chiron with Martin's grandpa while he leaves for business. Before leaving, he reminds his son to stay away from alleys and nobles. While in the old man's care, Chiron helps him out with his store. The old man thinks that Chiron is a smart child. Chiron asks him about magic. The old man confesses that he knows nothing about it. But he points Chiron to a bookstore that has a lot of books about magic. Chiron rushes to the bookstore while the old man is left with the book that the child was always reading. He opens the books thinking it's just a fairy tale book. But he is shocked to discover that the book is about actual magic. Meanwhile, at the bookstore, the shopkeeper doesn't want Chiron to touch any of the books. The shopkeeper states that the book is not for peasants and that his hands are too dirty to touch the expensive books. Suddenly, a customer arrives and the shopkeeper entertains him. While she is distracted, Chiron schemes through the books and notes that they are not worth reading. He leaves the bookstore disappointed. Just then, he sees a man carrying a box full of books. He follows him around only to discover that the man would dump the books in an alley. Chiron picks up one of the books and realizes how his poor dad got the book that he was reading. He sees some nobles and remembers what his father said about them. Regardless, Chiron approaches them as he thinks about how he is any different from the nobles. Suddenly, a guard stops him because he was about to enter an area that only nobles can access. The guard asks Chiron where his parents are and he replies that his father is nearby. Upon hearing this, Chiron dashes away and hides. He was able to escape his pursuers. Thereafter, he comes out of hiding and sees his shoe on the floor. It came off while he was running away so he puts it back on. Just then, he overhears a headmaster teaching his students about magic. Chiron thinks that he may have stumbled upon a magic academy. He pushes his ear against the wall and continues to eavesdrop as the headmaster asks his students about the most important talent when it comes to magic. Later, Chiron learns that the answer is insight. The headmaster explains that insight is the ability to understand something without any concrete evidence or proof. It's a law that has always existed in the world. Magic is of a similar nature. Hence, one needs insight to feel and accept it. He adds that insight can make someone a genius mage. Chiron then ponders about whether he will ever become a mage. When suddenly, the headmaster calls out to him and asks him about his thoughts. Dumbfounded, Chiron thinks about whether he should run or answer. But at that moment, Chiron thinks that if he doesn't climb the wall, he will regret it forever. So he scales the wall and sees an old instructor sitting with his young students. Upon seeing him, the headmaster, Myral Fias, asks him whether he would like to join them. Chiron walks over to them. The other students didn't want him to join the class because he's a commoner but Alfia still wants him to join them. He asks Chiron what got him interested. Chiron replies that he wants to see some magic. He shares that he has read books but has never seen magic before. The students call him a liar. In response, the headmaster shows them wind magic. Out of nowhere, a gust of wind sends the kids flying in the air. Thereafter, they start to fall. Chiron panics as he falls since he could die if he hits the ground. He closes his eyes and anticipates the impact. But just as he was about to hit the ground, he hears the students laughing at him. He opens his eyes and realizes that he is now hovering a few inches above the ground. 
The headmaster tells him that it was magic. Chiron asks Alphias about magic. He exclaims that he wants to know the truth even if he can't understand it. The class was shocked and the students think he's being rude. In response, Alphias states that magic is a mental operation that explores the truth of reality. Chiron then interrupts the headmaster and says that the reality is irrational but it's actually closer to the truth. The class is surprised to hear this from a commoner. Alphias then asks him if he read that from the book. To which Chiron replies that he just saw similarities between the books. He thinks that maybe the truth is actually hidden inside irrationality. The headmaster is impressed while his students are confused. Chiron asks him what he needs to do to learn magic. Alphias thinks that the Chiron is brilliant and he can feel the boy's passion for magic. But, unfortunately, he is a commoner. The headmaster instructs his student, Shu Amin, to enter the spirit zone and she complies. After entering the spirit zone, the headmaster asks her how many coins he's holding in his hand. Shu Amin answers correctly. Alphias explains that the mage who enters the zone becomes supernaturally aware of the outside world and is able to dominate reality. The headmaster tells Chiron how to enter the spirit zone and asks him to try it on the spot. This will determine whether the boy has the potential to learn magic. Chiron thinks about erasing everything other than his sensitive mind. He then opens his eyes and tells the class that he just heard sounds. The students laugh at him as they think that he has failed. Alphias pats him on the head and tells him to keep practicing so that he'll be able to do it. After that, the headmaster leaves with his students. As he walks away, Alphias thinks that Chiron actually has potential but it is wasted since he was not born as a noble. Chiron scales the wall to leave the premises. He thinks that it really worked. It turns out that Chiron actually entered the zone. During that time, he felt like he was the world itself. He runs around and cries as he thinks about how beautiful it felt. For an instant, he felt as though he was able to leave his body and become infinite. While running, he bumps into a group of thugs they demand money from him as they ask him if he's from the wolf gang. Just then, a noble named Amy arrives at the scene. One of the thugs claims that the boy had bad intentions so he was being treated that way. Chiron exclaims that it is not true. Upon hearing that, a thug kicks Chiron and he falls on his knees. They begin hurling insults at him as they kick him mercilessly. Thankfully, Amy tells them to stop. She approaches Chiron and asks him if he's okay. He cries and tells her that he did not do anything. Upon hearing that, Amy asks the thugs if they can think of anything more fun to do. They come up with suggestions but Amy decides to check if he's fit to become a slave. The thugs then tell him to remove his clothes. Suddenly, he starts seeing a different world. He remembers how Alphias used a spell to create wind. Amy notices that something is off so he tells the goons to stop. Thereafter, Chiron summons a powerful gust of wind that sends his attackers flying. They later fall on the ground from a considerable height thereby causing injuries. Enraged, Amy approaches Chiron and asks him where he learned magic, when suddenly, some people arrive at the scene. She jumps away. The people see the thugs that were knocked out and Chiron runs away. Meanwhile, in the house of Karmis, Amy arrives home and her father, Shakora, asks her if she skipped class again. Amy just replies that she has already learned everything. After that, she tells her father to introduce her to someone who works in a magic academy. We then see Vincent and Alina in their house. They are looking for Chiron who went outside to chop wood. Vincent starts searching for his son. He remembers when he almost lost Chiron in the city of Craze. Vincent has no idea what happened that day. Later, we see Chiron holding on to an axe. He thinks about the wind magic he used against the thugs. Chiron was never able to use that magic again. However, he now has the ability to enter the spirit zone. He enters the spirit zone and sees something glowing on the tree. He swings his axe towards it and the tree falls down in one strike. Chiron calls it magic. Nearby, we see Vincent hiding from his son. He saw what happened and he couldn't believe his eyes. This is the first time Chiron was able make a tree fall with one strike. He then proceeds to cut the tree with a handsaw. After that, Chiron keeps on repeating the process hoping to learn more about magic. Three years later, we see Chiron in the woods. He has mastered the skill. He feels like he has already become one with nature. Chiron heads back home and sees a royal carriage. He enters his house and sees his parents sitting with an assistant butler from the house of Ogent. His name is Temurin and he greets Chiron. 
Chiron introduces himself to Temurin and the butler replies that he came for Chiron. Temurin takes a close look at Chiron's face and asks him if he can read. Chiron replies that he can. Thereafter, Temurin asks him if he is willing to work for the House of Ogent. He is going to be sorting books in the house's great library for two years. This excites Chiron as he knows that the House of Ogent has books about magic. However, Temurin warns that Chiron's family will be hunted down if a book is leaked. Temurin adds that he will give their family a lot of money because their lives are on the line. Vincent exclaims that they didn't listen to the demands because of the money. He just wants Chiron to accomplish his dreams by reading books. Temurin then asks Vincent if he's been lying to his son. In a flashback, we see a six-year-old Chiron reading books. Vincent thought that the boy is clever and that maybe he has the blood of a noble. He regrets not being able to send Chiron to school. Vincent trained Chiron how to work in the mountains. But when he saw his son working, he felt devastated because he has raised the boy as a woodsman's son. So he begged nobles to let his son work for them while letting him read books. Back to the present, Vincent was offended by Temurin's question. He shouts at Temurin to leave his house. Temurin is about to leave but Chiron tells his father that he's going to accept the job. The butler tells him that he will return to pick him up in a week and that once he enters the manor, he can't leave until it's over. Chiron then thanks his father for giving him such a big gift. His father cries and he tells his son to return to him safely. One week later, Vincent signs a piece of paper and Chiron boards the royal carriage. Chiron starts to question whether he will survive for two years. While on their way, someone in the carriage explains the Ogent family's background to Chiron. They arrive at their destination and Chiron's jaw drops as he sees the great walkway. After alighting from the carriage, Chiron's companions warn him to watch his words. They take him to the place where he'll be staying. There, he sees Temurin and together they head to the great library. Temurin explains that Chiron's task is to organize the books in the new library. He adds that Chiron can't go outside or enter the manor without special permission. After that, Temurin proceeds to teach Chiron the butler rules. The next day, Chiron starts working. While organizing, he learns that all knowledge is connected and history is the backbone that connects it all. He secretly reads history books during his free time. Later, Temurin approaches him and tells him to take good care of his uniform and fix his hair. That evening, Chiron falls asleep while reading a history book. Temurin takes the book he was reading as he thinks about how naive Chiron is. He thinks that Chiron dreams big but he will never be successful. After three months, Chiron is already used to his job. He learns that nobles don't really care if the books get leaked and that commoners risk their lives for things that nobles won't even remember. Regardless, he thinks it would be best to live a quiet life. Suddenly, a man charges into the library. It's Reanogent. The youngest son of the Lord. He hides behind Chiron's desk and tells Chiron to keep him hidden. Thereafter, Rian's swordsman instructor arrives. He asks Chiron where Rian is hiding. Chiron points out Rian's location and the instructor drags him outside. Rian gets mad at Chiron. A few days later, we see Chiron reading books again. He has completed 82 books in four months. As he reads, he begins to question whether reading history books is the right choice. He realizes that scholars and mages are the same but the scholars cannot enter the spirit zone. Suddenly, Rian enters the library and shouts at him. He shares the struggles he went through after his instructor took him away. Rian states that revenge was the only thing that kept him going. He berates Chiron and grabs him by the vest. Rian is surprised to see that Chiron is still calm. Upon seeing this, he takes Chiron to the training ground. Chiron plans to just let Rian beat him up because his parents' lives are on the line. Rian gives him a wooden sword and challenges him to a duel. Rian calls Chiron a coward. Chiron asks him what he did that was cowardly. Rian replies that he sold him out to his master despite being in trouble. Chiron notices that Rian's expression has changed. Rian is ready for the duel. He gives Chiron three chances to strike before he starts attacking. Chiron notes that the wooden sword is sturdy and it could break his bones. If that happens, he will be sent home. He charges at Rian who easily deflects his attack. He lost his first chance and he realizes that Rian is a strong opponent. Chiron swings again but Rian just blocks his attack. Now he has only one chance left. Chiron then enters the spirit zone and strikes Rian's wooden sword. 
Rian prepares to attack when suddenly his sword shatters. The strike is so strong that even Chiron's sword breaks. Rian asks him where he learned swordsmanship. Chiron explains that he doesn't know swordsmanship. He just learned that skill from cutting down trees. Rian doesn't believe him. He's been training with the sword for 15 years. He remembers Ryojin who is so much better than him. Rian gets furious and gives Chiron a real sword. Thereafter, he declares that they will have a match using real swords after a month. Until then, Chiron must learn swordsmanship. The next day, Chiron thinks about Rian. He remembers that unlike his brother, Rai, who is a genius swordsman. Rian has no talent whatsoever. Chiron regrets his actions. He should have just taken the hits from Rian. Now he has angered Rian and he could really die. Thinking that there's no other way around it, Chiron reads books about swordsmanship. Meanwhile, Rian continues to train under his master. He is training harder than ever. Chiron later learns that a swordsman has a schema which is the exact opposite of the spirit zone. It involves complete mastery over every cell in the body. He thinks about trying it out but he realizes that it would be inefficient to focus on a skill that is the opposite of spirit zone. So Chiron decides to use spirit zone instead while studying swordsmanship. We see Rian once again, he fiercely attacks the dummy while his master orders him to stop. He expresses his frustration about not being able to use schema. But his master grabs his weapon and tells him to call it a day. Rian sits down with his master. The master tells his student that he has no talent but he thinks that Rian is good at doing something and that is hard work. The master adds that hard work is the mortal enemy of geniuses this motivates Rian to work even harder and he is determined to defeat Chiron. This concludes part 1 of this recap. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Who is going to win the duel? If you want a part 2 of this recap write a comment down below. Till next time.